Hey, what's going on, you guys? Welcome to a brand new video on Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet. My name is Vinice SG, and hope you guys are having a super wonderful day. I am super glad to see you guys back here for a new video. So, this video, we're going to be talking about the best way to rank up your sword skills, like the fastest way, like what enemies to fight, what areas to go to that will help you quickly gain proficiency in your sword skills, like all sword skills, so you can get those maxed out to level 3 ASAP. Let's get right into it. Alright, so there are several attack type sword skills in Fatal Bullet. There's Horizontal Square, Star Splash, Vorpal Strike, Sharp Nail, and Dual Orbital. Dual Orbital is the only attack that utilizes the dual wielding of sword and pistol. Now, as a rule of thumb for ranking up any skill in Fatal Bullet, you must use the skill in order to gain something called proficiency, and that is gauged by percentage, which you can check on at any time by selecting that skill in the Skills menu tab. Now each time you use the skill, you gain experience with that skill until the percentage bar maxes out at 100 and you will either learn the next stage of the skill or that skill is completely maxed. Now in the case of stage 1 skills, you only have to fill the bar to about 65% for most skills before the second stage of that particular skill is available for you to unlock with skill points. Now if you lack the skill points to unlock that skill, visit the SPC Glock and Lobby Center and purchase more with medals by talking to the blue haired offices unit. Now when it comes to gaining proficiency with sword skills, there are certain areas and enemies that just work better than others. For instance, trying to use Sharp Nail on a flying bee type enemy is kind of pointless. You want to use that skill on an enemy that is grounded. Case in point, sword skills are melee skills, so you want to use them on enemies that you can get close to and touch. The perfect place for this is the Remnant Wastelands, specifically the Scorpions. Using all sword skills on groups of scorpions is a great way to level up all sword skills except for Sword Barrier, the only non-attack sword skill, and I'll talk more about Sword Barrier later. Horizontal Square in particular is perfect for ranking up in the Remnant Wastelands with their grounded mobs. I would suggest going over to the Wandering Lurker, the scorpion boss in that area, to rank up that skill as well as Sharp Nail. You can rank up the other skills here too, but there are better areas for those in my opinion, but Remnant Wasteland, with its ability to travel to different mobs and waiting for them to respawn while you travel to other mobs, is great because in about 30 to 40 minutes, you can rack up a lot of proficiency and even gain some levels. Now gaining levels while doing this is ideal, but it's not really necessary because even if you don't gain a level, you will still gain hella proficiency with your skills by attacking multiple mobs with your skills, alright? Now, Star Splash is a skill that is easier to get off on enemies that stay still. I found that using Electrodynamic Stunner on enemies like the Shooting Phage or maybe the Waste Gang immobilizes them and allows you to do this perfectly. Also, fighting huge enemies like Ghost Pet work well with Star Splash, especially when they are stunned, alright, because they're super huge and you can just hit them. The more you use it, the more proficiency you gain, so when you're using these skills, I wouldn't suggest using a weapon that deals crazy amounts of damage. Use one that is weak, if not the weakest one, so you can get the most proficiency out of the encounter. So fighting a shooting phage or waste gang with a very weak sword will make the battle last longer, but you will get more proficiency from the fight, more percentage. Sharp Nail and Horizontal Square use that on mobs. Vorpal Strike and Star Splash on single enemies that don't move around, like large enemies like the Ghost Pet or maybe the Machine Walker bosses. Now, Sword Barrier is a non-attack type sword skill that allows you to repel bullets. It's a skill that you'll learn halfway through the game's story mode. Now, to rank up this skill, you just have to use it. So to do this, I like going over to Extreme Mode and then to the Remnant Wastelands Cave Midpoint. There are a lot of shooting enemies in this area, so use it here as often as possible while maybe taking in with you to support and assault. Now, if you don't have this area as a waypoint or maybe you don't have Extreme Mode, that's okay. Just go to an area that has enemies that shoot at you and use the skill as much as possible. I just like this area in extreme mode because there's like 95 shooting type automatons here and the little bastards will definitely shoot at you as much as possible if you let them. 
Now, when you're doing this, do not take a tank with you as they will draw attention away from you. Sword Barrier has a very long cooldown, but it does last a while. I would even use a tank skill like Taunting to draw the enemy's attention to you so they shoot at you. Now make sure before you kill the enemies, you see your character deflect bullets. I would even draw out these fights by setting your NPCs to support so they heal you and you can keep on using the skill. Because each time you activate the skill, you gain a percentage of proficiency. So if nothing else at all, remember that. Maybe keeping the enemies alive so you can keep on activating the skill might actually be more beneficial. So when you return to the SPC Glocking, you can see how much proficiency percentage you've gained per trip to the combat area. I think when I did it, it was something like eight times activated got me like maybe seven or eight, maybe sometimes nine percent proficiency. So check it out for yourself and let me know your results. Now, finally, when it comes to dual orbital, the sword and pistol dual wielding sword skill, you can use that on pretty much anything, man. I found that I got a lot of mileage out of it when using it against Ghost Pet. Because Ghost Pet's an enemy that has like three bars of life, especially on extreme mode. So if you have your NPCs there with you, you got them set to support, just use dual orbital as much as you can against the Ghost Pet or any large enemy. But I found that Ghost Pet was easy to use because I could just teleport right to him. So basically keep using dual orbital and you're going to gain some percentage. It has a very short cooldown time. Use a weak sword when you're doing it um, because then it'll give you a weaker pistol and whatever like that. So you won't kill the thing as much uh, as quickly as possible. So you'll just be there just spamming the move over and over again. And then, you know, in a little bit of time, you're going to gain stage two. And then a little bit more time after that, you're going to gain stage three. All right. So uh, I hope this video was definitely able to help you. If it was, please do me a huge favor and just let me know that down in the comments below. Now here, I want to show you this specifically. Um, when you're fighting these facsimiles, they have a tendency to shoot at you a lot. So if you are going to go to this area in the uh, Remnant Wastelands Cave Midpoint, when you see these three facsimiles, definitely take your time in fighting those because they will definitely target you and it's, you know, just let them shoot you or whatever like that. All right, but uh, I got sidetracked. That's going to be it for this video. If you have any more questions or comments or concerns about, you know, leveling up sword proficiencies and stuff like that, definitely let me know that down in the comments below. If you have any questions pertaining to anything else, definitely let me know down below and I'll uh, read it and I will try to do my best to help you out if I can. All right. You guys continue. Have a great time playing Sword on the Line Fatal Bullet. The DLC is coming soon. Can't wait to get that. Unlock some new areas and just have fun playing the game and running around with a photon blade because photon blades are honestly the coolest thing in the world to me all right you guys continue to have a great day be awesome and i'll see you on the next video peace out